don't be one of those people that click this video, leave a dislike and a comment about how I'm so wrong about Ultimate Spider-Man. Just, okay, wait a second. Just listen to me. Hear me out, okay? Now, in my last Ultimate Spider-Man video that I did on issue one, I said there were a few things that I don't really like, but I understand that I have to wait for them to flesh out the series a bit more before making a judgment. Except everything relatively stays the same with issue two, except there is one huge concern that I do have. And this problem is more present than ever in this issue, and I'm scared that they won't rectify it going forward. Now, to kind of add context to what I'm about to talk about, we have to go all the way back to the early 2000s. Yeah, I know, like 20 odd years ago now. See, Spider-Man has always been a character that was created by chance, not a character that was destined to exist. Peter Parker was bitten by the spider that could have bitten anyone, and I firmly believe in my eyes that is a core aspect of the Spider-Man character. Spider-Man is the everyman. He could literally be anyone. He could be me, and he could be you. I'd refer back to that Stanley quote that he gave about him being anyone under that mask, but it's so overused, and you probably get the okay. point. Spider-Man could have been Mary Jane, or it could have been Harry Osborn, it could have been Aunt May or Uncle Ben. Spider-Man could have literally been anyone, but for some reason, it ended up being Peter Parker by chance, and that is what made makes the character so special, or at least in my eyes. It is a core part of the character that I think if you're going to make a Spider-Man adaptation, you can't change. That's a massive part of the character's selling point and relatability. For example, I could never be Iron Man, I could never be Batman, I could never be The Flash, but I could be Spider-Man because, you know, the spider just happened to bite Peter Parker. It could have bitten me instead. Obviously, that's, that's not going to happen. We don't Live in a world where that happens. And that's when we reach the early 2000s when Marvel released The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, Issue 30. And this was the big start of this whole saga of problems for the character. This issue is very well known by comic book fans as the story where J. Michael Straczynski introduced a character called Ezekiel Sims. Now, JMS is a really good Spider-Man writer. In fact, he's probably one of the best Spider-Man writers we've ever had. But I'm not gonna lie, he didn't cook with whoa, introducing whoa, wait, this character. Hey, yeah. The story was pretty good, and don't get me wrong, it was written really well, but the implications that introducing this character has had on future Spider-Man stories, let's just say, hasn't been great, in my opinion. Now, Ezekiel Sims led to a whole range of new Spider-Man characters, including the likes of Morlin and the Inheritors, and it was only the beginning. This story followed the idea that Peter Parker was actually special, and in fact, he was meant to be bitten by that spider because he had something called a spider totem. This would open a whole can of worms for Spider-Man going forward because the idea of Spider-Man being someone's destiny was now a thing that the official comic books had written into the law. And we also then started seeing stories pop up more frequently of Peter Parker's destiny to become Spider-Man. The next time that this would prominently happen would be in 2014 in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, TASM 2 had many issues, as we've discussed many times on this channel before, and God knows how many videos that have discussed this film, but this was one of the biggest problems I had with the movie. So yeah, it turns out that Peter Parker is the only person in that entire universe who could have been bitten by that radioactive spider. In The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Richard Parker, when working on the spiders, revealed that he actually injected his DNA into the spiders, meaning that when Peter got bit by one, he essentially didn't just keel over and die. Now, this is arguably even stupider than the whole Inheritors thing, because you're telling me that out of 8 billion people on Earth, only one person could get bitten by that spider and survive and gain superpowers. Yeah, so much for ruining the whole Spider-Man is the everyman type thing. But this wouldn't be the last time that this would happen. Soon after, we would actually get the comic book event Spider-Verse written by Dan Slott, which would bring back the idea of the spider totems and thus the whole idea of destiny. Don't get me wrong, I love the Spider-Verse and the movies that came from it. And overall, the Spider-Verse multiverse story has had largely a positive impact on the fandom and the stories that have come out of it but this is still a huge problem. I also would like to add that it doesn't make the whole, oh, Peter Parker got bitten by chance thing any better when most of the variants of Spider-Man from the Spider-Verse are all versions of Peter Parker. We have Peter Parker, we have Spider-Man India, we have Spider-Man Noir, we have Peter Parker himself, we have Ben Riley, which I guess you could say is Peter Parker, and loads of other versions of Peter Parker. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like a girl version of Peter Parker somewhere. They're all Peter Parker. If they really cared that much about it and want to keep one of the character's core themes intact, they would have made every other spider person in that event 
a different Spider-Man. They would have made every single Spider-Person completely different. Different names, different backstories, different personalities. But no, we've got Peter Parker, Peter Porker, Peter Parker, and another Peter Parker. And then we have the occasional Gwen Stacy and Uncle Ben thrown in there. Either way, the last instance of this happening was, of course, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Now, I guess you could say, contrary to my point, I actually do love Across the Spider-Verse because I believe the positives that came out of that film far outweigh the negatives that I'm about to talk about. But yeah, the point still stands with Across the Spider-Verse. And of course, I am talking about the canon events. Now, there was a massive debate online about these canon events when the film first came out. They have since died down and no one really complains about them anymore, but I'm going to do some complaining right now. Canon events dictate that certain events like the death of Captain Stacy, the death of Gwen Stacy, Peter getting the symbiote, etc., all have to happen to every single version of Spider-Man at some point in their lives. Now, need I explain why this is a problem? Don't think it's a problem. Let me tell you why. This goes against the whole idea of Spider-Man suffering consequence. If I knew that in Tasm 2 that Gwen Stacy had to die, then it's not really Peter's fault. If I knew that Aunt May in No Way Home had to die, then it's not Peter's fault, because no matter what, it was gonna happen anyway. Even if Peter did manage to prevent all of these things, then Miguel O'Hara was gonna swoop in and, like, destroy the universe or something anyway. <laughs> The idea of canon events completely eradicates any form of stakes that any of these stories have because it's like, well, if it's going to happen anyway, then where's the consequence? Where's the stakes for Peter to try and make this right? If Peter actually succeeds, is it just going against a canon event? Am I just supposed to believe that Miguel O'Hara probably at some point will come in and fix this whole situation? I, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Either way, Across the Spider-Verse dictates that it was Peter's destiny to suffer and it was Peter's destiny to become Spider-Man, which... I don't really like. The theme of destiny is what I'm alluding to, and this brings us nicely onto Ultimate Spider-Man. Peter Parker was told that it was his destiny to become Spider-Man by Tony Stark in issue one, so he took it, and that doesn't really sit right with me. Ever since my first video on the topic, I didn't really know how to approach this issue. I tried to hold out for issue two, but more affirmation set in, and I don't really like it. I was holding out for the fact that maybe Peter might not realize how in over his head he is and there will be a massive learning curve of responsibility, but Peter is Spider-Man because he was told to be. Peter is Spider-Man in this universe because he chose to be, not because it was the right thing to do. Right, okay, I get the whole story is that Peter believes there is something missing from his life, which is then why he then gets bitten by the spider and becomes Spider-Man because that part of his life was ultimately missing. And I'm not gonna lie, that's fine as an introduction to the character, but when you make it the sole reason as to why he becomes Spider-Man, I think that takes something special special away from what made the character who he was in the first place. I feel like making it the sole reason as to why he is Spider-Man just kind of feels cheap to me. Now, I could be wrong. Issue 3 could throw a massive curveball. Maybe Wilson Fisk and the Green Goblin will hit him like a brick wall, and Peter is really going to feel the weight of what it means to be Spider-Man, and then maybe he'll try and give up, but then kind of realize that he can't. Maybe that will be his responsibility arc throughout this whole series, and I God hope that that is the case. Maybe that is the direction that they're going with this. And I really, really hope that's the case, but at this moment in time, I can't get behind the whole it's your destiny thing to be Spider-Man. It just doesn't sit right with me, and that's not what Spider-Man is to me. In terms of the characterization of Peter, MJ, the kids, and the rest of the side characters in this book, Hickman does a really good job. The Wilson Fisk story, although seems like something that we've seen a million times before, it very much is refreshing to see something closer to what a great 616 Spider-Man story would look like. And despite everything I've just said, it is actually kind of interesting that Uncle Ben is still alive. Hey... That's pretty good. Like, we've never seen a version of Spider-Man where Uncle Ben actually goes on to live, so I'm interested as to what they're actually going to do with his character now that he isn't six feet under. I also thought that the Shocker was cool, and it's always nice to see him as one of the first villains Peter has to go up against. And I know many of you saw this coming, but the only thing other than the whole Destiny thing that I don't really like about this issue is the nanotech suit. Oh my god, they gave him nanotech! <laughs> We complained about it in the MCU Spider-Man movies, okay? So I better not see any of you praising this in the comments if you are one of those people that complained about it in the MCU. I get that this is a new version of Spider-Man and they're trying to do something a little different, but come on, I mean, they even teased a ripped costume on the cover of issue three, as if we weren't gonna notice that that definitely won't be the case 
overcome the issue. Like, at least, at least embrace the nanotech suit, right? I guess this will also explain how he gets the variation in his suits from the original covers that were released last year, which is really cool, I guess. We'll get to see different versions of the Spider-Man suit throughout the series without major story implications, which I think is a cool way to introduce those designs for this universe if they're not actually going to go down the direction of, say, Ben Riley or Spider-Man 2099. But yeah, to wrap up, I don't like how it's Peter's destiny to be Spider-Man. That's my final thoughts. Either way, the issue is pretty good overall. It was written pretty well. The characters were characterized pretty well, like I said. We're just going to have to wait for issue three to see how the story really does unfold. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.